Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another what's for dinner video. Today I'm sharing five easy dinner recipes with you that I've cooked for my family in the past couple weeks and hopefully you will get some inspiration for your dinner time as well. So I'm going to be sharing a really great recipe for chicken piccata along with a garden salad, a recipe for chicken and noodles, which is always very comforting and hits the spot. We're also going to be making some smash burgers on the griddle with baked beans. I'm also sharing my homemade tiramisu recipe with you all a copycat olive garden salad, which is one of my kids' favorites, and some ravioli with Italian sausage and Parma Rosa sauce. So the first dinner, actually, I didn't have a photo of, so I'm sharing it with you here before I show you how I made it. Very easy. It's some tortellini alfredo with chicken and mixed veggies and a breadstick. So I am using this tasty, savory seasoning mix by McCormick, and all I did was season my chicken very liberally with it and saute it up in a pan. This is just cut up chicken breast that I had in the freezer. I thought it out, seasoned it, and just sauteed it in a little bit of olive oil. I also made a couple packets of the McCormick creamy garlic Alfredo sauce. This is my favorite type of Alfredo sauce. I love it so much better than the jarred type. You just whisk it together with some milk and butter and it makes a really good Alfredo sauce. My daughter Kira loves cheese tortellini and so I decided to get some from the freezer section at Walmart and make this. It makes for a super easy dinner. So once the tortellini is all cooked, I went ahead and drained it. One package is just about the right amount for two packets of that Alfredo Alfredo sauce and so I just went ahead and stirred that together the the pasta will soak up a little bit of the Alfredo sauce so you want to make sure that you have just a little bit extra and so that's what we had for dinner on this night the breadsticks were actually left over so that was a great way to use those up Okay, so before we move on to the next recipe, I just wanna take a brief moment and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You guys know that I have worked with Skillshare in the past and I love their online learning platform. It's a great way to get lots of education on many different topics. There are topics on design, illustration, um, computer classes, photography classes, but what I wanted to mention today is that they actually have a really large selection of culinary classes and so, if you are looking for ways that during this time where we were most of us are in self-isolation to deepen your culinary skills and learn how to cook some specific things i would definitely recommend skillshare as a way to expand your knowledge on that one of the classes i'm enjoying right now is the slow cooker secrets get more flavor in less time with yumly i've been watching that and it really gives some great tips on slow cooking so if you guys are interested in trying out skillshare there will be a link in my description box below. Skillshare is very affordable and yearly plans are less than $10 per month. So if you would like to try Skillshare out along with me, I will have a link for you to click in the description box below. And this is valid for the first 1000 people who use my link, but you will get a free two month trial of Skillshare so you can explore some new education for yourself. Okay, so now back to the uh, what's for dinner video. The next recipe or dinner, I guess, that I'm gonna show you is a chicken piccata. This was probably one of our favorites out of this bunch. And I wanted to make some roasted zucchini to go on the side of this just because I had a few zucchinis in my fridge that were needing to be used up. So what I'm doing here is I uh, went ahead and washed and dried these zucchini and I'm just cutting them on an angle into probably about quarter inch thick slices and I'm putting those on a baking tray with a little bit of parchment paper. I drizzled them with some olive oil, salt and pepper and I also had some Parmesan cheese in the fridge that I thought would be good with this and so I spread them out into a single layer and sprinkled some Parmesan cheese on the top and then I just roasted these in the oven I think at about 400 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, we all really like these. Adam commented that I should make them like this again because the cheese melts and it gets crispy on the zucchini and it's a great way to uh, use those up if you have them lying around. Next, for the sauce for the chicken piccata, I needed some shallots, so I'm just going to mince one of those. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, 
I will link the chef's knives that I use down below in the description box. Um, I use a couple different brands, but the ones I've been liking lately are the Xylus brand. They're super affordable and you can get them on Amazon. And as long as you don't put them in the dishwasher, they stay super sharp. So I'll link the original recipe that I used for this down below so you guys will have the exact measurements, but I have some chicken cutlets here that I seasoned with salt and pepper and I dredged them in just a little bit of flour and I'm sauteing those in a skillet with some olive oil. While those are sauteing, I'm also cooking up my pasta, so just some penne there. And then I also whipped up a quick garden salad. So this is just some green leaf lettuce with iceberg that I had washed up. And this is a creamy garlic salad dressing that I made previously in a meal prep video. I'll link that video and recipe down below. Um, that turned out really good. So once the chicken was done cooking, I removed it from the pan and made the sauce. Um, it calls for some lemon juice and capers and chicken broth. There's my completed zucchini and then the pasta is mixed with some cherry tomatoes. This was so good. Everyone commented that I should make it again. Even Murphy wanted some, <laughs> but we just served the pasta with tomatoes with the chicken and the zucchini and of course the garden salad on the side. Okay, so next up is chicken and noodles. So this is a recipe that I don't make a ton, but Adam requested it. It's one of his favorite things and it's just pure comfort food. So what I'm starting out with early in the morning is making the chicken in the slow cooker. So I like to use chicken breast for this, but you could use canned chicken, rotisserie chicken, chicken thighs, whatever you wanted to. I cook these chicken breasts in the slow cooker all day with a little bit of butter and chicken broth and seasoning um, about four to six hours on low heat and they're nice and tender. The noodles that I'm using for this are some old-fashioned Amish noodles. These are egg noodles. I prefer to actually use the Reams brand of frozen noodles, but my grocery store was out, and so I went ahead and used these instead, and it turned out fine. Um, either way, you want to boil the noodles in chicken stock, or I actually use the powdered chicken bouillon, or you can use box stock or stock that you have in your freezer. Whatever you have will work just fine for this. And once those are tender I went ahead and thickened the broth up with a little bit of cornstarch and cold water then I put the broth and the noodle mixture into the crock pot along with the shredded chicken and just let that stay warm until it's time for dinner you can adjust the seasoning with salt and pepper and this was so good obviously this is um, a very stick to your ribs kind of dinner we had this with lima beans and some rolls on the side and everyone loved it All right, so this week when I was grocery shopping, I saw some mascarpone cheese in the store and it inspired me to make some tiramisu, which I haven't made for a while. I use the Pioneer Woman's recipe for tiramisu, which I'll link down below. It doesn't call for many ingredients, uh, but it is delicious. And if you like tiramisu, you will definitely love this. So what I'm doing here is I have a glass bowl and I'm whisking together some white sugar along with five egg yolks. And I'm going to whisk those until they are uh, like a pale yellow color and then what we'll end up doing is cooking this over a double boiler so I don't really have a proper double boiler all I typically use is a glass bowl and a simmering pot of water and then we'll also whisk in some Marsala wine so I wanted this to be authentic especially for the uh, recipe video purposes but if you don't have or you can't find Marsala wine you can totally leave it out it won't have as strong of a flavor but it will still be good so I'm I'm going to cook my custard over um, about medium heat just so the water is just simmering for about five minutes and make sure that you stir this frequently because you don't want to end up with scrambled eggs but this is what the custard will look like when it's done you can remove that from the heat put a piece of plastic wrap over it and stick it in the refrigerator for about an hour until it's cool. What we'll end up doing is mixing this with the mascarpone cheese and whipped cream and that will make the cream filling for the tiramisu. So once that was cool, I went ahead and started to 
whip up my cream. So I just have some cream in the bowl of my KitchenAid mixer there. I'm using the whisk attachment to whip the cream and I'm going to pour in about a quarter cup of sugar. Just pour that in kind of slowly so that it has time to incorporate with the cream. And then this recipe also calls for a pound of mascarpone cheese. If you cannot find mascarpone cheese in your area, you can use cream cheese and then just mix in a little bit of sour cream. Um, to substitute. I've done that before. It works fine. Here is the egg custard that we made. And then just also make sure that you leave your cheese time to soften. So have it set out on the counter for a couple hours to make sure that's soft. While the cream is whipping, you can go ahead and add either the cream cheese or the mascarpone in small batches until it's all incorporated and then add the custard until everything is combined together. Once that cream is combined, just chill that for a couple hours until it is nice and chilled through. So after that, it's time to assemble the tiramisu. So basically you're going to layer ladyfinger cookies and you soak those with strong coffee and then add the um, cream mixture on top and then sift a little bit of cocoa powder over the top. So these ladyfinger cookies I actually found at my hy -Vee, my regular grocery store. Um, I've tried to look for them at Walmart before and my Walmart does not carry them but make sure that you get an extra package because I actually did not end up having enough I made it work but the labeling on the package was wrong as far as how many were in there but essentially um, yeah it's just it's very simple it's the soaked lady fingers with a mixture of coffee and Marsala wine and vanilla bean and then you layer it with the cream mixture and um, obviously a little bit of cocoa powder so you want to make this probably a couple hours before you're going to eat it but if it sits in the fridge longer than a day it's going to get soupy um, so just keep that in mind if, especially if you're making it for a crowd so here is the finished dish um, I do not know where I got this blue Pyrex dish so I don't have a link to it I'm sorry uh, but this was really good and we actually kept it in the fridge for uh, about two days and ate on it for dessert. It does have quite a strong marsala and coffee flavor. So if you don't like coffee, you're probably, I don't know, you're probably not going to like this, but maybe, but it's obviously a very traditional Italian dessert. It's one of Adam and Kira's favorites. And so I don't make it very often, but I seem to be making a lot of things during this uh, self-isolation period that I haven't made in a while. Okay, so next dinner I want to share with you guys is some smash burgers. We were kind of just cr craving some good old cookout food. And so the first thing I'm going to start out with is a baked bean casserole. So for this, I used two cans of pork and beans, some barbecue sauce, some ketchup, some stone ground mustard, a little bit of soy sauce and Worcestershire sauce, some brown sugar and some bacon. I just had that in the fridge already cooked, so it worked out just fine. So this original recipe, I believe is from Trisha Yearwood and it's on the Food Network's website. I'll link it down below. I originally saw this on uh, Mandy's channel from Mandy in the Making and the original recipe calls for ground beef in with it. And obviously since we were gonna be having burgers, I wasn't going to put the ground beef in there, but I wanted to try the baked bean part. So it's very simple. You just mix all the ingredients in a bowl. If you were using the ground beef, you would mix that in at this time too. And then you just bake it in a casserole dish for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I would say that I would probably make this again, maybe with some modifications. It kind of felt like it was missing something, but I'm not sure what. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it I feel like it needed more barbecue sauce, but I'm not sure. Let me know if you've tried this recipe and if you like it. Um, but here is the beans topped with the chopped up bacon. So that went in the oven. And then here is my meat for the smash burgers. So this is just ground beef that I mixed with seasoning, um, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some A1. And then I just shaped this into balls because Adam is going to use his Blackstone grill to smash them and make cheeseburgers. So along with it, we made some sauteed mushrooms. Um, Adam is the only one that likes mushrooms, but he enjoyed those. And then we also made some hot dogs uh, to go along with it as well. So this is the method that he uses. Basically just put the the balls of ground beef down on the griddle and you press them down and they turn out 
so good. If you've ever had burgers from like Culver's or someplace like that before, this is what they taste like. They taste exactly like that. If you don't have one of these griddles, you could also do it in um, a cast iron skillet, but this is how we like to do it. And then he has like a little pan that he covers them up with and steams it so the cheese melts delicious okay and here were the baked beans once they were done I just let those cool for a little bit while we were finishing up the burgers I also steamed up some corn on the cob and this was our dinner that night whoa calm down with the camera there Jennifer <laughs> Not sure what I was doing. I was probably trying to sit down, but we had our corn on the cob uh, with some baked beans and burgers, and this was so good. I want another cheeseburger again now that I'm watching this. Okay, so last meal I'm going to share with you guys is an Olive Garden copycat salad along with some ravioli with Italian sausage and a Parma Rosa sauce. So what I'm doing here is just washing up my iceberg lettuce in my salad spinner along with some fresh lemon juice. Um, I did spin that dry and that's what we used uh, for the salad. If you guys don't have a salad spinner to clean all your produce, I would totally recommend it. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Here's the ravioli that I used for this dinner. It uh, is in the frozen section at the grocery store. And then we are trying out this Knorr uh, pasta sauce, the Parma Rosa. It actually was really good. We've never tried it before. And then I also sauteed up just four lengths of Italian sausage. I'll end up cutting these up and mixing them in with the ravioli. What I like to do is just sear them on both sides and then I add a little bit of water to the pan and put the lid on to let those cook through all the way. Okay, so here's the copycat Olive Garden salad that I made along with the croutons and dressing and I put Parmesan cheese on there with olives and tomatoes and cucumbers. So once the ravioli was cooked through in the boiling water, I went ahead and mixed that with the Parma Rosa sauce and the sliced sausage. This was so good. We've never had this combination before, but everyone loved it and I'll definitely be making it again. So here's the completed dinner. We have the ravioli with the sauce and the Italian sausage and then the coffee cat olive garden salad on the side which everyone loves I love making that because it helps my kids eat more salad so that is going to be it for today's what's for dinner video I hope that you guys enjoyed this and you got some inspiration for what to make for your own dinner if you want more dinner inspiration be sure to check out the videos here on the right and I'll see you in my next video bye